Good evening, and welcome to our Monday Thursday service. <clears throat> this is a combined church service for both St. Paul's and Salem, which is being held this year at St. Paul's at 7 o'clock this coming Thursday, April 6th. <clears throat> if you're able to join us in person, that would be wonderful. If not, we're glad to have you with us virtually. Our silent meditation this evening <clears throat> excuse me, comes from N.T. Wright, who says this, Those in whom the Spirit comes to live are God's new temple. They are individually and corporately places where heaven and earth meet. For announcements this evening, uh, following the Monday Thursday service, both of our churches will be sharing in a 48-hour prayer vigil where we <clears throat> divide up the time slots into 45-minute slots and people can sign up for whatever time they wish. If you would like to participate with us, please do so. Set aside at least 45 minutes just to spend in prayer thinking about what Jesus went through and what it means for us. Um, also in our church, in our churches this week, we have the Stations of the Cross where people can go from one to the next. They're images with some writings and consider from the time when Jesus is arrested to the point where he's laid in the tomb. We'll also have this virtually uh, coming through on YouTube and Facebook, I believe, starting Sunday, sometime Sunday afternoon, uh, Sunday, April 2nd, that is. And of course, even though tonight's service gets gloomy and on purpose, we know that on Easter Sunday, Jesus rose again. So you're welcome to celebrate with us for that as well. We'll be having a 6 a.m. Easter sunrise service at the Crumb Pavilion in Carsonville, Pennsylvania, uh, thanks to some of our members at Salem. We'll also be having a church service at Salem at 8 a.m. and a church service at St. Paul's on Easter Sunday at 10 a.m. Again, if you can join us, that would be wonderful. And if you come virtually, that's fine too. We'll have that available for you as well. Let's begin our service. On this spring night, as darkness falls, we gather to remember the events of that evening when Jesus shared his last supper with his friends. What then shall we render to the Lord for all his bounty to us? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of his house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. We just heard from Psalm 116. Now let us turn to the Gospel of John. <clears throat> now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already decided that Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, would betray Jesus. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from supper, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, 
You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. And Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had reclined again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, slaves are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Here end our readings. God's love for the world has been revealed in Jesus Christ, who certainly loved us to the uttermost. Jesus, Savior and Lord, who at his last meal with his disciples gave them, and us, that new commandment to love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Indeed, that was the new command, the new mandate, mandate, from which we get our word Maundy, for Maundy Thursday. Let's join in our prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that so often our discipleship has been weak. When we have failed to serve as Jesus served, forgive us. When we have failed to love one another as Jesus loves us, forgive us. When we have been happy to proclaim our devotion to Jesus with our lips and then denied him by our actions, forgive us. Merciful God, empower us by your Spirit to be steady and true to you in every time of trial. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's take a few moments now for silent reflection and confession. And amen. Jesus came not to judge the world, but to save the world. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Friends, the good news therefore is this. In Jesus Christ, we are loved and we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. We come to the time to gather offerings that support the many ministries of our churches. And we thank you for your help as well. There is no greater sacrifice than Jesus laying down his life for his friends and for us. We can never repay this great gift, but let us at least show our gratitude. This evening's offering will now be given and received. 
And at church, the offering for Monday Thursday will be going to support the good work of St. John's Emergency Food Closet in Higgins, where they help a lot of people locally. Let's join now in our offertory response. Praise God who gave his only Son. Praise Jesus for the work now done. A cross of wood, love's true signpost. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Holy God, accept these gifts from our hands and use them to demonstrate your undeserved love for all peoples. Amen. And I'd invite us now to join in the prayer that Jesus taught us. <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever. Amen. Excuse me. We come now to our service of Holy Communion. If uh, you haven't had an opportunity to gather your elements, pause the video for a moment, and if you can bring some bread or a cracker, bring it back to the screen, and wine or grape juice, other fruit juice, if that's all you have. Let's continue. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And anyone who comes to me, I will never drive away. Living and loving God, we lift our hearts to you in gratitude and joy for all your gifts to us. You made us in your own image and set us in this world of astounding beauty. In your great love, you delivered your people of old from slavery, and you have delivered us from the power of evil and death through the sacrificial love of Jesus Christ. We praise and honor you, holy God. Heaven and earth are surely full of your glory. Blessed is he whose supper we share this night, and blessed are we who are renewed by his life. Before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come, and having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And at supper with them, he washed the disciples' feet and gave them this new commandment, Love one another as I have loved you. Jesus took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Be present, Lord Jesus, by your Holy Spirit, as you were in that upper room with your disciples when you shared this last supper with them. By your Spirit, make yourself known to us as we share among us this bread and this wine, which is your life in us. Amen. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We eat and drink with thanksgiving, remembering all that Jesus has done for us. This is the body of Christ, 
broken for us. Take and eat. This is the blood of Christ, poured out for us. Take and drink. Let's join now in our prayer of thanksgiving. Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for refreshing and renewing us with this meal and for nourishing our lives with the gracious gift of your life. Amen. In our service, next we will be having the Tenebrae, the service of shadows. That service ends in church with a stripping of the altar, taking away the altar paraments, the altar cloths, the candelabras, the Bibles, several other things, stripping it down to bare bones to remind us of how Jesus was stripped and left all alone. As a symbol of that, I will now remove the cross that I always wear. Amen. We come now to our service of tenebrae, a Latin word meaning shadows, where the light of the world appears to diminish and the shadows appear to win. These are called the seven last words or phrases of Jesus. The first word, when they came to the place called the Skull, they nailed Jesus to the cross there, and the two criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Jesus said, Forgive them, Father. They do not know what they are doing. The second word. One of the criminals hanging there threw insults at him, saying, Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The other one, however, rebuked him, saying, Don't you fear God? Here we are all under the same sentence. Ours, however, is only right, for we are getting what we deserve for what we did. But he has done no wrong. And he said to Jesus, Remember me, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said to him, I tell you this, today you will be in paradise with me. The third word. Standing close to Jesus' cross were his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. Jesus saw his mother and the disciple he loved standing there, so he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that time, the disciple took her to live in his home. The fourth word. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The fifth word. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, in order to fulfill the scripture, said, I am thirsty. The sixth word. A bowl was there, full of cheap wine, mixed with vinegar, so a sponge was soaked in it, put on a stalk of hyssop, and lifted up to his lips. 
When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. The Seventh Word Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light has come into the world, but people love the shadows rather than the light.